Hey guys, we are just finishing up three days here at Buccaneer State Park in Waveland, uh, Mississippi. Yeah. And what's it's on the... Uh, well, we thought it was the Gulf of Mexico, but we actually found out that it's the Mississippi Bay. Yeah, so it's like an inlet in on the Gulf. It's, it's not really like a bay like you would think of where it's got a channel and all that. It's right. pretty open. Mm -hmm. But it is an inlet area here. But it is, enough of that, this is a very nice state park. It's one of the nicest ones we've stayed at so far on this trip. Right. They have full hookups, water, electric, sewer, uh, tw um, 20, 30, and 50 amp electric. Um, the sites are nice. They're all paved and level. You have a picnic table, a, f um, a fire pit, everything you need here. But right. There is a, yeah, an area for a fire, and I believe you have to either bring or collect the firewood because they don't seem to sell it here. Yeah. There is a store. We didn't get into the store, but we didn't see any firewood around that. Right. right. Um, there also is a huge wading pool with a waterfall yeah. and the deepest part of the pool is five feet yeah and the shallower ends around the edges are two feet to three feet so it's you know pretty much for anybody right and right outside the park being on the water there are a lot of beaches that we did explore and the dogs love the beaches especially monty uh, zephyr loves them because she can pretty much run off leash which yeah. She always enjoys that. Monty was on a long leash, so he was able to run and play and, you know, explore the area a bit. Yeah, the beaches here are really nice. One of the things I liked about them was there's Beach Road, which kind of separates the beaches from the homes, so you don't feel like you're intruding on someone's front yard when you go use the beach. Um, there are a lot of nice parking along the beach, um, and it just goes for miles and miles like that. There's right. It's also a nice sidewalk and bike path, too. Right, right. So yeah, we did um, go over two or three times, and uh, yeah, and that that was nice. We did notice there is a casino close by, yeah, and another campground which appears to be right along the road. We didn't really look into that, so I'm not sure you know right. what the name was or anything right. about it. It looked like a private campground, right? But it is a it's a great park. We really liked it, and yeah, I we would highly recommend it. I would give it a five star rating. Yeah. Now, Waveport is not very Waveland. tourist. Waveland. Waveland, sorry. Waveland is not very touristy. Um, there are a few small restaurants in there and some chain stores and such, um, but there's not a lot to it. No. There is another section down a little bit along um, Beach Road that is a little bit more touristy with a few bars and stuff, but that's not very big either. So if you're coming here thinking you're gonna get a Virginia Beach or Myrtle Beach atmosphere, it's not here. This is totally different, which is something we liked about it. Right. Well, we've got to get going. This is a campground where we stopped for the night. It is Lake Charles Our Journey Campground, and it's really just a overnight type of campground. I mean, there's a few people here that probably are um, here for longer periods of time, but most of the people come in and park for overnight and head on off. It's only 
a mile off of Interstate 10. In fact, you can see Interstate 10 behind me as it's trucking along. It's far enough away that you don't hear it. There is a railroad tracks and a switchyard across from us that we've been hearing some noise this morning, but last night we didn't hear anything at all. So this was a, actually a really good overnight uh, stay. A lot of it's because the price was right. It was $25 a night for full hookups, which I think is just awesome. I hate spending $40 a night for a campground for just one night when I roll in there in the afternoon and, and head out early in the morning. We're at this campground, $25 a night, I'm happy with it. It's a good price. Got 20 and uh, 30 amp hookups. There's sewer connections. There's actually a couple of them here, depending on where it is on your rig. Water. Uh, it's everything we need. Well, we've got another day's driving, and we're going to put about 200 miles on us today, which isn't too bad, but it'll take us to the other side of Houston where we are going to pull into a state park for the night and then uh, a little bit more after that before another day after that and we'll get to where we're going to be for the next few uh, days so now it's time to get in the truck and get going so This is Stephen Austin State Park in Sealy, Texas. We stopped here just for the night. I really don't have much of a review on this park because we only spent the night and we didn't get a chance to really explore either the park or the area. So we're just give you a few shots of the campground and get back on the road. This is Potter's Creek Corps of Engineers Campground. Been here for the last couple of days and it's really a nice campground. It's our first Corps of Engineers uh, experience. And Did you like it? Yeah, I did. It's in Canyon Lake, uh, Texas. Yeah, Canyon Lake, Texas. Um, near San Marcos is probably the closest city close to it. Right. And this would be a great place to stay, especially during the warmer weather months. Unfortunately, while we were here, it was a bit cooler. Otherwise, we probably would have ventured out in the kayak. One of the features I really liked about this campsite was this charcoal grill. We actually cooked out on it one night, which was really kind of fun. Um, but we had to go out and buy some charcoal. And we didn't use it all, so I left it for the next campers. Hopefully it's still there for somebody, they get to use it and uh, some camp host doesn't come along and just throw it out. Yeah, there's a, a boat launch and the, it's probably a reservoir, but it's Canyon Lake and looks like it'd be pretty nice for kayaking and boating. Right, and it's a large campground, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean half of it's closed. Right, um, because, because of the time of the year, but yes. they are open 12 months a year. This campsite has water and electric, uh, 30 amp and 50 amp and then there's 20 amp too if anyone actually uses that um, but it's not a full hookup so there's no sewer but there is a dump station up here on the hill that we will hit on our way out yeah 
Yeah, it's very nice. There's a lot of deer in the campground, which Monty and Zephyr took a real yes. interest in. Yes. And yeah, uh, that was probably the highlights of our walks. Is you know when we walked along, we saw um, at one time like a dozen deer run across the road. At least a couple of times. Yeah, we yeah. saw them yesterday, and they actually took off towards a residential area. So we're not sure how that, um, you know, how they made out up there. We'll probably see them in this park again. Where's the beach? And Randy saw a buck this morning. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, wandering through the other part of the campground. Uh -huh. Every one of these campsites has a covered picnic uh, pavilion, which I'm sure is very useful on a hot uh, Texas summer. Also, you notice here that there is a nice gravel area here for your campsite, so you're not dealing with mud or anything like that. And, you know, if you put your rug out over that, you know, you're not going to kill grass, which I thought is very thoughtful. And down here, we have a fire pit. So not only do we have a barbecue grill, but we get a fire pit as well. So it is a real nice area, and uh, San Marcos is what? It's about 15 miles, maybe 20 miles from here. And for all you shoppers, there is the country's largest outlet center. In fact, there's two outlets right next door to each other. Right. So, yeah, that would be, if you had an off day weather-wise or just wanted to do some shopping, it would be a great place to visit. Yeah, yeah, we, we took a little ride over there and, and wandered around. We didn't make any video of that. Figured, you know, shopping's not that exciting for most people. Shopping is shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. we're getting ready to leave and head on to, actually we're gonna be staying with some friends down in Hondo, Texas. They've been, you know, graciously invited to stay a few days um, in their park. Yep. So we're headed there. Yeah, so let's get going. After we left um, Potter's uh, Creek, we went and visited some friends who uh, live in an escapees uh, co-op in Hondo, de uh, Texas. And they're actually subscribers to the channel and, and we met them through the channel, really. And because they owned an Airstream as well. Yeah, at the time they, we met them, they had an Airstream. Right. Um, so we stopped at, at uh, their park for a few days and it was our first experience with a um, escapees uh, co-op and it was really kind of neat it really opened up our eyes to another possibility of, of, of RVing that we could possibly do in the future right something when we're kind of want to cut down on our travel when we want to uh, live more stationary in one spot yeah if we want to have a destination someplace in the west or wherever we decide that would be if there happens to be an escapees co-op that we could get a site in there and then we could put the trailer on there and, and kind of use that as a, a western base camp so that was a very fun couple of days uh, visiting with Karen and Rex and their three dogs yeah and uh, yeah we had a very nice time yeah didn't shoot a lot of video except for some of the park that which we showed you but um, we had a really good time. Well, we've got to get going. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit that bell for notifications and we will see you guys down the road. Okay, bye. Bye.
better than 